we've heard a lot about this this offense in the last five months or so. And Robert says it's the best best offense in the world. What um what makes this offense so effective? Well, yeah, I don't I don't know if it's the best offense in the world. I, I do think the people that uh, you know that 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 I've learned from are some of the best in the world for sure. You know, uh, just the detail and and um, everything that they know about this offense, but. Uh, what, what's really separated this thing, and it's, it doesn't really matter what offense you run, it's, it really comes down to those players, you know, and what's cool and unique about this offense is, yes, it's the West Coast system, we're trying to run the outside zone and do the play action stuff off it, but we fit it to our players, and that's something that I think I've learned from all the, all the guys I've been around, you know, obviously mainly Kyle, but, but just knowing Sean, knowing my brother and stuff like that, so I think that's, uh, you know, something unique and kind of what separates, I think, this offense is it gets fit to the players. Mike, in uh, 2014, you were an offensive intern in Cleveland when the Browns had two rookie quarterbacks that started some games in Johnny Menzel and Connor Shaw. Um, how would that experience, just, you know, you being around that environment, help you with the development of Zach Wilson in his rookie year? Yeah, you know, that was um, that was a little different than I think what we're going through right now. Obviously, you know, we, we had Hoyer when we, uh, when we got there to Cleveland. Uh, where we haven't had technically a vet, you know, here uh, when, when I first got here. And then we drafted Johnny. And then the, the, the other difference to that was Johnny didn't play in, a, in an NFL system. I mean, he really never played under center at all. Mm -hmm. And we were going to fit some of that skill set, you know, that, that he had to, you know, playing more in the gun and do some of the zone read, you know, Robert Griffin type stuff. Uh, but it was a totally different circumstance in terms of, you know, what he had been accustomed to. So, you know, the unique part about Zach uh, getting here, obviously we don't have a, you know, a, a true veteran um, in the room. So he can kind of step right in and, and get going with it. But also the fact that at BYU, he played under center so often. Obviously he was in gun too, because that's where football's going. That's where NFL's going a little bit. Uh, but, but obviously, you know, just having that, that foundation of being able to play under center, I think makes it, you know, quite a bit different than what that uh, that 2014 year was. Mike, on, on Zach, if I could ask just a two-prong question, you know, what stood out to you in the pre-draft process about Zach? And then what have you learned about him over this last month or so you've been working with him? Uh, you know, the pre-draft draft process was just, you know, when you just pop on the tape, you just see the natural thrower. And I think that's even, uh, I think that's what we've all seen, right? Just people that kind of know football, people that really know football, they all saw this guy that had this unique throwing, throwing motion that was just so natural, you know, but then, okay, there's a lot of guys that throw the ball really well. Um, you know, what else can this guy do? And, you know, when you watched him, you, you saw him be able to, albeit he didn't have to play in the pocket too often with, a, with, you know, an NFL pass rush by any means coming at him. But when he did, he played well. Um, when, when he had to stand in there, he, he could stand in there. When it wasn't there, his ability to make quick decisions, whether it be throw the ball away or go off schedule and make plays. So there's just a lot of factors that just popped right off of, uh, off of the tape that you saw that, that could translate to not just this offense, but any offense. And then on top of it, um, again, having that, ha having that background of somewhat of playing under center and doing some play action type stuff so you could, you could literally see it correlate to uh, the system that we want to run. Um, which was which was unique because you just don't always get to see that in college. Um, you know, I think I think for what I've learned about him here, obviously we got to know him quite a bit before we drafted him. But but even since he's been here, it's just he's a he's a junkie. I mean, he just wants film to the face, and it's almost like you know, like I'll talk to my brother, and he's like, "You better not burn this guy out." Like he, he you're taking a lot of film with him, and it's like he's the one that wants to watch this film. You know, so it's just it's it's unique and it's uh, it's cool. If, for, to, to watch him be able to uh, sit there and, and stay focused and, and process all the information we're trying to give him. Mike, with, the, with that the said, I, with, with that said, Mike, do you try to set the pace um, at which he's like hitting benchmarks in his progression, like at this early stage, or do you let him kind of dictate that at this point, how he's kind of taking everything in? Yeah, that's a good question. I, you know, we, we definitely have, you know, a system and in, in, in an order of which we want to go about it, you know, and, and giving it from the ground up. I think I kind of joked with him early because when he first got here, he was starting to, he wanted to ask questions that were probably two questions away. And I said, well, let's get that, let's get that formation down. Oh, no, I can do that on my own. I got that stuff. Like I'll, I'll figure that. And he would, any quarterback would, but 
he, he, he wanted to do that on his own. He wanted to learn the stuff that, that there's no way he could learn on his own. So he wanted to hear it from us so he could start to process all that. But, you know, I, I don't feel like, uh, I don't feel like we have rushed it with him by any means, but there's no doubt. I mean, you know, obviously the more film you get to watch with the guy and the more he wants to take in and, you know, we're going to adjust to, to what he can take in. And um, I think he's done very well with it. Mike, the West Coast offense is known for its very long and wordy play calls. Are, are, are you, does that apply to your offense as well? Just a lot of verbiage for the quarterback to absorb? Yeah, Rich, I, you know, I, it, it definitely can get wordy at times. And I think all of our systems, uh, everyone that runs it from, from Cincinnati to Green Bay to, to LA to obviously San Fran, every year we try to find ways to, to simplify it and make it less, uh, less wordy. Um, there's going to be times where it is going to be pretty wordy when we're, you know, trying to do the, the can system two plays at, at once, but uh, we're not, you know, just because he's a rookie and hasn't called a ton of plays in a huddle, we're not trying to trim it off. We're just trying to make it the best system we possibly can, you know, and uh, he's done really good with the words. We really challenge all three of those guys, uh, you know, James, Mike White, and, and uh, obviously Zach had just, you know, the biggest thing is obviously, yeah, we have the footwork, we have the time, we have the progressions, we have all that kind of stuff. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. You have a pass rush. You got to get the play calling first and you got to get fluid with that stuff. And the more and more comfortable they get with it, uh, the better it will be. Mike, um, this is obviously your first time being an offensive coordinator in the NFL, but uh, obviously you were an OC for Davidson in 2013, uh, OC uh, in 2012, 2011 for St. Joseph College in Indiana. And obviously you've had your experiences in the NFL, being a pass game coordinator, things of that nature, and offensive intern. How has that experience, all of that experience helped prepare you to be an NFL OC. Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's like anywhere, whether you're at the lowest level of college or high school, all the way to here, you're always learning, you know, from something. I, I joke that uh, my, my first three years, I probably learned the most out of anything. I came right out of college and um, had an incredible opportunity to, to call pass plays a year out. And I look back at them like, man, I knew nothing. But then I look back at it the year before that, and I got moved to safety my senior year of college. And that was probably the only thing that gave me a chance that first year, because I actually kind of learned what defensive football was from a player perspective. And it, and it, and it, you know, helped me for that next year and so on and so forth. And, you know, every year you go, you just, you continue to grow. And that's the cool part about watching, you know, some of the older coaches in this league, you see the ones that are kind of stagnant and, and pretty content with where they're at. And then you see all, all these other older coaches that are just continuing wanting to learn. I watch our uh, quarterback coach, Greg Knapp right now. And he just like, every time Sal has a team meeting, I, I right behind him and he's taking notes about the team meeting. It's like kind of, you know, he's going over the schedule and Napper's going to learn about whatever he wants to learn about that day. So I think, you know, just this whole process, it's every year I've been learning something new and I've been very fortunate to, to be around some really, really good coaches. Mike, I have a two-parter uh, more on your background. How much of an influence has your brother had on you? And secondly, could you, how did you get, did your relationship with Robert just grow out of his relationship with your brother? I mean, was that just like a natural byproduct of that relationship? Yeah, Rich, I'll answer your second question first. You know, he, uh, obviously, Matt and, and uh, Robert were, were GAs together. And uh, I remember the first time Sala came over to our house, you know, we, my brother and I grew up in Mount Pleasant. My dad was a coach at Central Michigan for a lot of years. And uh, when he got let go, he stayed there and was, you know, our high school head coach. And uh, so Mount Pleasant, not a very big town. And uh, Matt and Sala lived about a mile down the street in an apartment with no electricity or anything, or not no electricity, excuse me, no cable or anything like that. They were trying to save every cent they could because they were GAs. And they knew that, you know, my parents were right down the street. So they're going to come eat our food and watch all the TV that I was trying to watch uh, and use our pool. Uh, so I got to know that, you know, obviously Sala at a pretty early age. So, you know, I, uh, my wife, Lauren, um, I was dating her in high school. She's known Sala since then, too. So um, you could tell right away that the, that that first year at uh, when they were GAs, um, they were they were really tight with each other. And uh, when Sala went his separate way going down to Houston, they just remained that way. So um, I've, I've known him for a long time. I've always looked at him as a, a really close friend. But then obviously getting to work with him in San Francisco, that's when um, my respect for him as a worker. I mean, he's He's very, very smart, but he's an incredible worker and he's really good with the players and, and he's truthful. So um, it's kind of a, when when he had the opportunity and he asked me, it was, you know, a no brainer because of the respect I have for him. And then to answer your first question, just with with Matt, you know, um, 
and I, and I truly mean this, uh, and, I, and I didn't really know it. I did know it because I, I always idolized him growing up as he is eight years older than me. And I always saw what kind of worker he was, whether it be working as a high school football player, basketball track, whatever it might be. But then the two years I had with him in Atlanta, um, I, there's no one that I've ever been around that works as hard as he does. He, it's like there's 25 hours in a day for him. And, and then at the same time, he doesn't blink. It's like he's never tired either. And it's, you know, I've, I've always say that, you know, I, I wish I could work as hard as him. I, I don't know if I can, he's wired a little bit different, you know, but uh, I strive to, and uh, you know, it's, it's something I've really always looked up to. You offer him any advice on the Aaron Rodgers situation? <laughs> you'll have to, you'll have to call to Wisconsin on that. I know he loves him though. Hey Mike, I'm Kim Jones from NFL Network. We haven't met yet, but it's nice to meet you over Zoom. Nice to meet you. Um, what are the qualities that, Zach Wilson has that neither you nor any other head coach can teach or coach can teach? Um, you know, I, he's got a lot of qualities that the, first of all, the, again, the way that he can move his arm all around like that. It's, it's hard to teach that, you know, there's not many guys that can do all the different things he can do with his arm slot and, and how big that is in, in football. It's always been big, but it's just kind of obviously been pointed out a little bit more. I feel like recently with the Mahomes and the Rogers and stuff like that, guys that just do it at such a unique level. Uh, and, and that popped off right away. And it's something that like, I would never try to force another quarterback to even learn how to do it. Yeah. They got to do it at some times. And, you know, when they're throwing some of the short passes, but uh, he, he has a unique way of, of going about it. So that's obviously something from a physical standpoint, um, you know, again, and then again, from the mental standpoint, uh, just in terms of how much he wants to learn per day and, and it's, he doesn't look like he gets tired of learning, you know, so it's, it's a pretty unique thing that if, if we only have a few hours, two to three hours, and that's all, you know, a quarterback's mind can process for the day, then that's good. That's a full day's work in terms of, you know, knowledge of an offense. He, he feels like, and, and I, and we all feel like he can, he can go a little bit longer with it. So it's pretty unique. Mike, I, I know that the hierarchy of the Jets, including probably the guy who actually drafted him, loved that he was a point guard and pointed to that, I believe both neck up, but also the arm stuff and everything. Do you see any of that there with, with Zach? Yeah, I think you see, uh, you know, when you think point guard, you think leader of a team and obviously being a quarterback, you're a leader of a team, but, but not only that, just his charisma with the guys too. A lot of times the point guards are going to be the voice too, not just the guy passing the ball. And that's what you want in a quarterback to be as well. Not all quarterbacks are like that. And that's okay. You want them to be a leader within their own personality, you know, and you can definitely see kind of that point guard mentality, that quarterback mentality where, you know, he's, he's not afraid to, uh, you know, talk it up with these guys and he fits in, uh, you know, from, from my vantage point pretty well. We'll take a couple more for coach, a couple more for coach. My, Mike, what, tra what traits do you look for in your running backs to fit this outside zone scheme? And also, if you could just give a, a thought on the backs you have now. Yeah, I mean, that's we, we get that question a lot. You know, I think it kind of it, it dates back almost to Mike Shanahan, you know, and that's kind of when this run game really started uh, rolling with the West Coast system. And yeah, honestly, my answer to that, Rich, is it, they come in so many shapes and sizes, you know. There's definitely an element of being able to put your foot in the ground and go north and south, you know, and uh, you don't even need to be the most loose guy in the hips and be able to dance around and all that. You got to be able to just press it, put your foot in the ground and go. And I think that definitely stands out when you're watching, whether it be pro free agents, the guys you have or, or the draft. But like I said, and I truly mean it, I mean, there, it's, there, there's so many shapes and sizes that these guys can get it done with. Uh, we've been fortunate enough and, and I've been fortunate enough to be around a lot of good backs within this system uh, that, that we feel like we've gotten the most out of. And could you, could you repeat your second question? It was, it was about I just our guys. how it applies to your current personnel and like, you know, how those guys stack up right now. Yeah, and it's it's been pretty cool to watch them. I, and I've really enjoyed getting to work with those guys. The, the thing that pops out is not even physically with them, is these guys are mentally really, really sharp. And it shows in the meeting rooms. I, I was joking when I was installing today that I got to come up with some better questions because they are popping off answers so quick to me. And I think that's a credit to their, their position coach, Taylor Embry. He's doing a heck of a job with them. Um, but, but those guys are, those guys are on it and that, that translates to the field. Um, all of them have a unique skill set in terms of they're all a little bit different. Ty Johnson's different than LaMichael. That's different than Tevin. Uh, but I do believe they all can be productive backs in this, in this system. So it'll be exciting to see how this thing shakes out. I know they're going for it. Um, and like I said, I've really enjoyed working. 
Mike, um, you have uh, obviously you have Corey Davis, who is you know you brought in to be the number one um, receiver, and he was extremely productive in a play action game last year with Tennessee. Um, and obviously, play action is going to be a major part of this offense. How um, what will go into making sure that that aspect of his game is able to translate into this offense? Yeah, you know, and that's Arthur. Obviously, uh, you know, ran a very similar system. Really, for Corey, it's just kind of what words did uh, did we change here that probably was a little bit different than in Tennessee. But a lot of the route stems and all that kind of stuff are are the same thing. So I think he's he has a level of comfort. Uh, you know, obviously getting here and, and, and getting going. But Corey's a Corey could be good in any system. I just think he's really good in this system because he's got physicality, he's got size, and he can put his foot in the ground, one foot cut and separate. And that's what this offense kind of started to become. It's a lot of just one foot cut, separate, let's get the ball out and go. And when you have a guy that can put his foot in the ground sharply, still run away from you, catch the ball. And like our quarterbacks can feel that guy. Like you can feel him going over the middle. You feel like he's got a big radius and on top of it, he's fearless. And the reason you know that is because you've seen it on tape. So um, like Corey could, Corey could be successful anywhere. He's made of all the right stuff, but uh, you know, I do think this, this system fits him really well. Like how do you, uh, how last do you, one here, last one here for coach. Like, how do you see Denzel Mims fitting in? Obviously, in a tough rookie year, injury wise. Um, how do you see Mims fitting in your offense? You know, he kind of he kind of goes in that same mold as Corey in terms of just like the the, the size uh, and the ability just to if if the ball is anywhere in the vicinity, you expect them to get it. And the thing that stuck out with Denzel, I, I you know, I obviously uh, we we watched him when he came out a year ago. Uh, we took Brandon Ayuk in the first round. Um, so we were kind of done with receivers at that point. And then obviously coming here in the second round, but being able to really study him, you knew he was big, but then when you get to him in person, he's actually a little bit bigger than even I thought. And then on top of that, he's, he's looser. And what I mean by that, like, it, it just looks like he has a wingspan of like Kevin Durant. He's got tons of range as long as that ball is anywhere around him. I think for him, it's just going to be uh, that, that transition to the NFL it's no excuse, but the reality is all those rookies last year, particularly the receivers, I think it's so hard to, to tr you know, translate from college to pro because it's such a different game for receivers because of the coverages that they're seeing uh, in terms of the tight bump. He just needs to work and get out there and put as many reps on tape to start to, to get adjusted to this game because he didn't have the offseason last year. Then he came in and training camp was hurt. So then he missed the first part and ended up having a pretty decent back half of the year. But um, I'm excited to work with him. He's eager. He's, he's a really cool uh, dude to work with, uh, but he's just going to have to get out there. And again, it's just going to be reps and, and just going and understanding the speed of the game.